Startup SEV automaker Aptera has been gaining momentum with its flagship SEV in recent months and is steadily moving toward production. When the automaker set out to build the most efficient solar-powered electric vehicle on the planet, it divided the development phase into four key stages. These are the Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and Delta stages of development. After successfully completing and showing off prototypes of the Alpha to Gamma stages, Aptera showcased some of the key features of its final production vehicle, the Delta. In a recent video, the automaker released a digital visualization of Delta that shows it is nearly complete. Hi, welcome to Intrigo, where we explore exciting innovations in the EV industry. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and ding the bell to set your preferences to this channel. It really helps the channel out. Since Camus' presentation at Fully Charged Live, there has been an accumulation of press releases and teasers from the automaker's side. Aptera's BINC, which stands for Body and Carbon, will be supplied by CPC. Following Aptera's principles of simplicity, security, and sustainability, BINC consists of just six main parts. This facilitates the assembly of the Delta, which is heavily assisted by AGVs, or Automated Guided Vehicles, supplied by Red Viking. In May 2022, Aptera and Red Viking announced an agreement to supply all AGVs, or Automated Guided Vehicles, for Aptera's final assembly. The Red Viking AGV mobile manufacturing platform is versatile, flexible, scalable, and easy to move. No building modifications are required and quick changes are possible thanks to clean, level floors and a quiet environment. AGV charging takes place when the vehicle is stationary, so it can be charged while work is being completed. The AGV technology allows Aptera to extend the principle of efficiency into the production cycle. This is because the benefits are great. AGVs reduce labor costs while improving safety, accuracy, and productivity. These benefits explain and give a great understanding of why Aptera chose this path. In November, we learned that Aptera would be the first EV automaker to integrate the North American Charging Standard, or NACS, formerly known as Tesla Connector. You can expect that functionality in Delta. After publicly expressing its support for this charging port standardization, Aptera released a photo of the charging port and announced that Lectron would become the automaker's supplier of NACS charging ports and EV charging devices. Aptera filed petitions on Change.org and other sites to encourage the adoption of the Tesla plug as the standard plug in the United States. This is because Aptera finds the J1772 and CCS sockets too big, bulky, expensive, and inconvenient. As a result, they petitioned Congress to make the Tesla plug a national standard, and more than 40,000 people signed the company's petition to make the Tesla plug the U.S. standard plug. Interestingly, Tesla soon after announced that it would allow other EV manufacturers to use its connectivity, officially calling it the North American Charging Standard. We have also had a feel for Aptera's production process through video rendering. Aptera recently released a complete visual of its final assembly plant, allowing it to analyze and reconstruct the entire manufacturing process. As such, Aptera's production process is divided into 13 stations, each of which must perform a major operation. AGV Red Viking will transport vehicles from station to station all across the factory and out for delivery. And now Aptera has released a digital rendering of Delta, including a fully assembled BINC. Most BINCs are made from a carbon fiber sheet molding compound combined with a sheet glass molding compound. Carbon fiber sheet molding is a compression molding ready to use carbon fiber reinforced polymer composite. Carbon fiber sheet molding compound uses shredded carbon fiber instead of shredded glass fiber in the polymer resin, as is done in conventional sheet molding compounds. The length and distribution of carbon fibers are more even and uniform than traditional sheet glass molding compounds. Carbon fiber molding compounds are significantly stiffer and stronger than traditional molding compounds, but at a higher cost. Carbon fiber molding compounds combine the lightweight properties of carbon composites with a manufacturing process known as compression molding that allows rapid production and is suitable for high-volume industrial applications. These factors make the automotive industry a good competitor for this technology. However, the disclosure does indicate that we can expect a full Delta disclosure in the next few days, and that Aptera may have achieved another major milestone. 
but the automakers isn't out of the woods just yet. There are still some challenges they must overcome before production can begin. Having the best plans and visions in the world is nothing without the resources to bring them to life. And according to the latest information, there are still tens of millions of dollars short of what is needed to successfully take on manufacturing. Investors and government loans will be needed to fill this gap. In a December update, CMO Sarah Hardwick said that once Aptera's design work is complete and it hits its funding goals, system integration and Delta versions will begin. This means that the main constraint really is funding. To be honest, the history of two-seater cars in America is short. The automaker's challenge is convincing the public that owning the Aptera will make life better than traditional EV options, because the Aptera is not only efficient and environmentally friendly, but is actually more reliable. If they can do this, it will be much easier to find investors and government loans. In some ways, the company is already doing this in a great way. Aptera has invested heavily in marketing. The low price of the lowest version of the car also makes it an attractive choice as a commuter vehicle. If you already own a pickup truck, SUV, crossover, or minivan for non-commuter roles, a new car that lets you run to work and back without paying for gas and possibly not having to plug it into a power outlet for $26,000 makes a great deal. But there are two things the company needs to add to the mix in order to actually sell to the public and keep things on track. It's not making it clear that a car is the best option for a couple's trip and letting people know it's a car the best option for a changing and dangerous world. However, we do know that the company is well-positioned to not collapse like it did in 2011. Its most important advantage is experience. The Aptera crew has made mistakes in the past and should have learned some lessons on how to avoid this in the future. Given this experience and their confidence in resuming operations in 2019, they should know, or at least believe, that this scenario can be prevented. No one wants to start a dead business again. We can see companies working with more industry experts to develop stronger ideas, perhaps knowing they have to succeed where they have failed before. Aptera works with companies such as Munro and Associates and many other organizations to create high-volume models as well as superior models. So far, Aptera has attracted 404 investors domestically and raised over $537,463. Aptera has already received reservations for about 37,000 solar electric vehicles, and the future looks bright for Aptera. Have you been convinced Aptera is a real car? If not, tell us why you don't think it's a real car in the comments section. Do you find the video interesting? If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with others. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new uploads. Thanks for watching.